Hello and welcome to this week's Primed Insight. My name is Gavin, I'm the Marketing Director here at Blast One. Today we're going to discuss why commercial blasters should never use a compressor with an inbuilt aftercooler. And there's only one reason, and that's because you're in business to make money. And so if you take nothing else from this insight, remember, inbuilt aftercoolers are bad for your blasting business, and here's why. Did you know that inbuilt aftercoolers typically have a pressure drop of 15 psi? That's right, 15 psi. So if you're blasting 100 psi according to the pressure gauge on your compressor, the pressure actually coming out of the compressor is probably only about 85 psi. So you've probably typically cranked your pressure up to 125 psi, you're still probably only getting 105 to 110 psi. The issue here is remember our rule of thumb that one psi pressure drop is 1.5% productivity drop. So to translate this into your profit and productivity, by allowing this 15 psi pressure drop, you're effectively reducing your productivity with a 20 to 25 percent. And this equates to more than a whole day of blasting every single week. In order to gain maximum productivity and performance on any job site, switch your air hoses over to the non aftercool side of the compressor and run the air through a proper air dryer. A rightly sized air dryer is a guaranteed to drop a maximum of 3 psi. If you've got an air dryer that drops more than that, you have a problem, give us a call. Inbuilt aftercoolers are great for other trades or running spray pumps, but I'm telling you they're a death blow to abrasive blasting companies. Thanks for watching this week's Prime Insight. We'll see you next week.